So Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts. Welcome to So Funny It Hurts, where we interview your favorite funny people and explore the trauma that made them that way. I'm your host, Michaela Gordon. I am so excited to have this guest on. We have a histore, but you may know her. She has amassed over 2 million followers across her social media, her best-selling cookbook, Not the Worst Cookbook, a thriving podcast with her husband, Not the Worst Marriage, her whole brand, Not the Worst Mom, and the internet's favorite mama. Please welcome Sarah Buckley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, for the people that don't know this. Yes. We actually grew up together in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And your sister, Brie, if she's watching, I just want to say I have not forgotten the time that she won beauty and beat me in a pageant competition when we were about seven years old. So oh. I just wanted to say that because it's been sitting with me. I'll hit her next Please time do. I see her. That beautiful bitch. Yes. Okay. And that's your sister. Mm -hmm. And you're beautiful. So oh, get out. You. Well, look, are you kidding? <laughs> you're so beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're more... You want to do this for the next five minutes because we I can. Will. Okay. And I know that we can. But no, you're pretty. No, <laughs> you're pretty. But no, look at your you're hair. Prettier. No, look, are you, have no, you look seen at your eyebrows? eyebrows? Do you need look to at get a mirror? Luscious lips. <laughs> um, I'm so happy you're here because my favorite thing about you, and we'll get into everything, is I think you're the realest, one of the realest human beings on social mm, media. Thank you. You've really turned everything that's happened in your life into this incredible comedic story that so many people I feel like really need right now. People want comedians that they relate to. So I want to talk about all of that. But first, you have, how old are your kids now? Uh, so my youngest is going to be 15 next week. And then I have 16 and 18. Okay, so 15 next week, 16 and 18. Mm -hmm. And you had your first baby when I was 18. When you were 18. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, because you're seven years old right now. And right. so you have these grown ass children. Yeah. And how we were able to reconnect. Well, we always are connected. We're right. always friends. But how I was like, I need her on the show immediately is <laughs> you told this story. I want you to tell oh this story God. about your gorgeous daughter. And she was pranking you. And she sent you this photo. Oh, do you not know it's not a prank? Oh, good. Oh, God. This was not a joke. This was this. I was not thought a, this was a joke. That's what's so fucking ridiculous about it is that this was not a joke. Like, if I didn't know that it wasn't a joke, I would I would think it was one of those things where it's like, tell your parents you're going out, show them this picture, and then see what they say. That's that's <laughs> what I thought it would be, but no. Mm -mm. Okay, so what happens? So. <clears throat> My daughter loves to go to bands. She especially likes local shows. And sometimes she will like send me a link or a post or whatever about a show. And she's like, hey, can I go to this? And I'm, it's like in the back of industrial, like in a warehouse. And I'm all, no, <laughs> no, you can't. She's like, but I've seen this band before. And I'm all, I don't fucking care. You're not going here because it's sketch as fuck. And she's usually really good about it because I let her do, you know, we try to say yes as often as we can because then we have to say no, like you have to say no. Right. So I, she asked me if she'd go to a show with her boyfriend and then go spend the night at her friend's house, which again, we don't do sleepovers. I don't know if we'll talk about that later. But we'll talk about that later in case you're wondering what that sleepover story is. It's terrible. It involves 911. Um, go ahead. <laughs> correct. <laughs> and um, so... You know, I said, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. And then when I was driving over to her girlfriend's house, um, I was like, well, send, I was like, sh sh where is it? Like, send me the address, whatever. And so she's like, oh, okay, I'll send it to you right now. She sends me the address and then she, and I could tell she hadn't looked at like the Google image. Just by the way, she pulled it up. She was like, well, so, okay, so this is where it is <laughs> and shows me what I'm pretty sure is a trap house. Okay, so we've pulled this photo up for our audience. Chase, please, Chase, our amazing producer, can you please pull up the photo? This is the house that she sends you. On God. Okay, and you're like... I was all, 
No, that's you're lying. That's that. No, that's where a concert is. That's where you think you're attending a, a concert. Concert. Loose term. Uh huh. Loose term. Uh -huh. That is a show. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Right. Um. I I know what it's not. It's not a place my daughter is allowed to go. <laughs> My 16-year-old daughter. Uh -huh. so I was, she was like, well, I already bought the tickets. I was like, how much were they? I will literally give you double. So she bought tickets to see a concert yeah. at this facility. Correct. That venue. Uh -huh. I mean, th th it looks safe with the, the gate. It's I a mean, gated community. It's got the landscape. The curb appeal <laughs> cannot be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's There's... everything. Okay, so, she, so you're like, no, you're not going. Uh, no, I'm like, baby, I'm it's sorry. It's not happening. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, my point of view, <laughs> I follow Not the Worst Mom, and she, you post everything, and it's brilliant, and we all die, so I cannot wait. So she tells this story, and she pulls up this photo, and I see the address, uh -huh. and I went, oh, shit. Which, by the way, I didn't post the address. You could tell what the address was. I could was. tell, right. No, you blocked it out. There was yes. just a tiny bit, because I was like, I know that house. And then I looked and I could see half the street yes. name. Uh -huh. And I go, oh shit, I grew up in that house. <laughs> and then I go, Lisa, I think well, I... This wasn't is that your neighbors? I so then I go, Lisa, I think I grew up. And then I go, oh no, no. I t also me, so vain. I'm like, I grew up in that house. <laughs> I grew up in the house next door to this house. This was my neighbor's house. And then I said, wow, it all makes sense why I'm so fucked up now. Uh and then I said, you get on this show right now it was immediately. Always, it was also <laughs> probably a different time. I, I think it still looked like that. Because my neighborhood that I grew up in... <laughs> it was a different time. A di wonderful neighborhood. I drive by there occasionally like to see my childhood home. And it looks fine, but also I'm like... I wouldn't move there now. No, 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 no. Right. Like, no, 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 no I wouldn't no. live there now. No, no. Like that, was like, that was like a fancy guy house growing up. Right. And right. now it's a concert hall. So Now it's a venue. <laughs> it's, a, it's a venue. And so this is what brought us together, this, this home. We should have done the, we, knowing it's a venue, we should have done the we podcast done there. inside of there. Uh -huh. we, we fucked up. Yeah. Well, and so the part of the story that I didn't share was someone, um, somebody who follows me, DMs me, and she's like, can you send me the post of what, because mind you, the, the, this band is selling tickets just on their Instagram. Like, it's a small local band. That's fine. That, like, that's not weird at all. But for this particular event... It's like DM for the address, which in my mind is like an instant red flag. Like yeah. that, that, I don't know. It just give it just gives no, me a little. No, it's giving meh. weird vibes. Yeah, weird vibes. If you're in college, you want to do that. I don't give a shit, but not my daughter, obviously. And so she's like, can you send me the post? She's like, because I am pretty sure that my like um, uh, property management company manages that house and they are not cleared no. to have. No. <laughs> yes. And I was did, like, did they, did they get in trouble? I think I forgot to send it to her. Okay. But I couldn't find it. Well, if you're watching this podcast, here's the house you're Reach looking back for. Out because I couldn't find <laughs> your DM originally. Um, I'll try to find that post and if they we'll didn't you. disband. May, they might have broke up altogether. Yeah, the they whole might. Band. Obvi the whole and band I think, is like I think we're us. the reason. I would like to think I'm the reason. I think you're the reason for that. I'd be fine things. with that. <laughs> so, yeah, I Venmoed my daughter twice the amount of the tickets. Good for you, Mama. I'm like, it's not your fault. This is why I'm here. To make yeah. sure you don't go to stupid shit like this and die. Yeah. In a yeah. cartel house. In a cartel house. Literally. It would it, it would give her enough trauma, though, maybe to start her own stand-up career. Yes. The only thing I regret is that Sterling and I didn't take the tickets and go to the house. <gasps> you should have gone to the house. Total missed opportunity, man. Total missed opportunity. Really shit the bed there. Okay, wait. Let's talk about you and Sterling. Because okay. you talk uh, a lot about becoming a teen mom. Yes. And we actually went to the same Catholic school together. And I've talked about going to this Catholic school. And I really wasn't very popular. It was kind of a tough school. And then I was funny, so it sort of got me off the hook. And then I ended up leaving right. popular the and early 2000s. Say, you could be hot or nothing. They were right. You were hot or you were not. And blondes right. were hot and ethnic girls were not. Very true. Now the Kardashians, we're so hot. The Kardashians I, had not paved the way for no, brunettes. No, no. We were apparently. just, I was just giving roly poly black hair energy. Oh my God, and now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that before I talk to you, your sister and your sister's best friend uh, were the nicest 
nicest girls to me. Bree and Lizzie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was all there's only one best whole friend. Life, that you could think, say. Our whole from when we went to middle school until high school. And I just want you to know that they were so good to me. Wait, so did you go to our middle school too? I went to St. Francis. Oh, okay. And then okay. we'd have the dances together. Oh, yes. And so okay. we'd run into each other. And the gr- they were the best to me. So oh. I just always like to say that because a lot of the girls weren't. Uh, yeah. those two girls were so i love your sister and lizzie so much i will pass that along please do i love them yeah um okay so you went to gorman so you kind of talk about how it started so you were dating Mm -hmm. sterling Mm -hmm. and how did it come up that you became a teen mom and how was it sort of because you were pregnant and going to school oh tell me explicitly how you got pregnant right now at the rainbow theater so when i mean i don't want (laughs) to Raw These dog. people need the birds and the bees, and we're here to give it to them. <laughs> um, so, okay, so what was the question? How, like, so you guys started dating, and yes. then you got pregnant? Yes. At eighteen, I got pregnant at seventeen. Okay, and you were like, "We're keeping my baby." Yeah. So I originally refused to take a pregnancy test. Like, literally, was all maybe it's maybe I'm probably not pregnant. Maybe it's cancer. It could be cancer. <laughs> but on that was. That was a rational thought in my mind. I get it. And I was like, no, it's probably terminal something. <laughs> it's definitely, that it makes way more sense than a pregnancy test after all of our unprotected sex in the last little bit. But um, uh, so finally Sterling ambushed me with a pregnancy test and he was all. How dare him? You're going. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that validation because it's I still disgusting. to this day. The patriarchy, man. <laughs> The misogyny <laughs> that's finest. Oh, you want to know if you have a baby? Um, mm, okay. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> Weird thing, but so, <laughs> I, so I like took the pregnancy test. Mind you, I'm like two months late. Oh, yes. And because I'm like, this can't be, this is not my life. This, this is not happening. Like this is literally not happening. I didn't even know if I wanted kids at all ever <gasps> in my life. And I was, this was at the end of my junior year. And I was planning on going away to college and Sterling and I had like kind of talked about it, but not really. But the understanding was that if I move, if I go away to college, we are going to break up. He's like, I don't want to do long distance anymore. And I was like, well, I'm not going to stay for a man because I'm (laughs) strong and independent. (laughs) And so I had kind of like decided, okay, whatever. So that was the trajectory I thought my life was taking. Um, And then he surprised me with a pregnancy test. And then I surprised him with a pregnancy. And... (laughs) It was terminating the pregnancy for me personally was just never an option. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, this this is where we're at. And he was very supportive. Sterling was excited. No, no it's nuts. That's Hi, nuts. Cara, I, I want to trash him because I want to just always have your back. But I love your, I love her husband. I love him too. I, I love Sterling. I really I, do. Listen, I can talk trash about the best stuff about him. So it's <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's an art. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he was. He, You know, which hindsight yeah you guys were so young is incredible yeah and he was really really supportive he had always wanted to be a dad that was his whole life's purpose was to have kids and so we decided that well I didn't want anybody to find out until I had at least finished junior year I was like I'm not dealing with that especially at our school I was not yeah because I why I bring this up is I think it's really important to understand and I want to talk about your childhood because I want to know when you knew you were so like what was the first instance you realized like being funny can get me out of a lot of shit because i feel like that's how we know immediately but i going to catholic school being pregnant in catholic school giving birth to a baby and going back to catholic school your senior year Mm -hmm. it wasn't a time where we were all forgiving and loving because i went to that school right that was a really i don't want to say difficult to speak for you but I mean, you have to have a lot of balls, which yeah. I commend, which I'm obsessed with about you to do that because Sterling didn't even go to your high school. He went to a different high school. Yeah. So you were walking the halls by so yourself. Long. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Were the girls mean to you? Was anybody mean to you? Um, No, I don't. I can't remember anybody ever being mean to me. I mean, I like the friendships didn't really last, but I think in an organic, just real life sort of way, right. I don't feel like I was ever bullied or anything like that, but it was weird. Like high school is hard enough, but like high school with severe postpartum depression was even harder mm-hmm. that, you know, who was not very nice 
The teachers? It was administration. Uh -huh. They were wow. not super great. I mean, they were willing because, you know, at, um, are we allowed to say our school name? Yeah, we, it's, oh, okay. it's my show. Say whatever you want. Oh, okay. Well, you said like Dragon our school. Filth. I don't give a shit. F go Gales, Gorman. <laughs> Um, but they, <laughs> no, I mean, I'll talk shit about Gorman all day, but it's because I went there. Anybody else it's says we it. went there. We can do it. If you guys yeah. said anything, we would drag you also. Oh, it, listen, if you don't like Gorman, it's just because we're better it, than you. It, and that's it's the only amen. reason. It's the Quite only literally, reason. Thank you, God. Yes. <laughs> so, um, uh, they were really gracious in allowing me to come back because it's a private school. They could have said, you're, you know, Jezebel, you're not allowed to come back here. Um, but I wasn't allowed to go back once I was six months pregnant, so I missed my first semester of senior year um, and then went back and at Gorman, you couldn't take like less classes. You always had to have a full, whatever that is called. Like even if you only needed two credits to graduate, you had to take five or six mm -hmm. classes, like mm -hmm. whatever. So they let me only take the last three that I needed because I had done summer school every year. So I only needed like math, English and whatever was my government. Um, was my last one to graduate. So they let me to just do those three, which was really nice. But when I left, because I only went back for maybe a month and I was all, maybe maybe a little bit longer than a month, but I was like, F I can't fucking do this. Like, this is not, I'm the, I have a new life. Like I, like we had our, we were married. We had our own house. Like I had a husband who like worked all day and would come home and like, I'd make him dinner and like do laundry. And, and then I would like be going to high school. Yeah, I was like, fuck this. I hate this. And so when I left, uh, they were, and, you know, and I told them that it was my decision to leave. I wanted to just finish on my own. That's totally fine. I'm still getting, like, I still graduated high school. Yeah. I just didn't walk with my class. Um, and they were like, this will be the biggest mistake of your life. Hmm. And I was like, bitch, I'm 18 married with a baby. And you think this will be the biggest mistake, like it was such a fucking joke. Yeah. And I held on to that for so many years, it made me so angry. And I mean, obviously, no, it was, n I have never, ever regretted that ever in my life. Yeah. But uh, that was the only thing that I was all mm, terrible. Well, I think it's important that, you know, I agree with you on the administration. I, I didn't have a great relationship with the administration as well. It was a different time as well. So I don't know. And then I went on to yeah. do American Idol. And like, I, th my mind was like, I'm going to be a singer. So I don't care about it anyway. Right. So maybe I had to like, they didn't like me, but you talk about the postpartum depression and again, it was not normalized. We're talking how many years ago? No, is this, 20, this was, so 15 this was years ago? 2005. Okay. So you're having postpartum depression mm -hmm. and you're literally building this whole life now for you and your husband. I didn't even know what postpartum depression was. Like, I feel like, you know, looking back and probably only if you were you know, around like childbearing years in that time, like, so the beginning of 2005, that was before even Brooke Shields went on Oprah and openly talked about her postpartum literally for the very first time. I think I didn't know what postpartum was until after my second baby. Like, it was just not a thing. It was like mommy, big baby blues. Like, mm, okay, maybe she need a nap. Maybe she need a shower. And yeah. then like, no. And then you had like Andrea Yates who... Like women are literally drowning their babies. And like, finally people were like, oh, okay, well maybe this is a thing. Yeah. So like no education, none, zero, no social media to even try to find other people who would, you know, you'd be able to talk to you like you can now. Yeah. There was, there was nothing. Zero resources. Yes. Oh, do you want to hear? Okay. Anything. Speaking of postpartum, my literal first day back at school, first class was English for honors. Do you know what we talked about that day? A modest proposal. Oh my God. Oh my the, God. Okay, for people that may not know what modest proposal is, please explain because it was, that's. No, I, uh, I can't think of who wrote it. I can't think of who wrote modest, uh, a modest proposal, but it was basically like how to solve um, hunger in back whenever the fuck this was. And they were like, oh my God, I have an idea. What if we just took all of the one-year-old babies now that they've been fattened up by their moms um, and then just chopped them up and distributed them. And then nobody will be hungry anymore. And that was after you gave birth. Going right back into your class. First day of school back. <laughs> if that's not the funniest goddamn thing you've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely horrified and traumatized me like i how could it not could barely get through the class and i was just like ah, oh my god i was like is this a joke is this an app like is, is this a, was this on the curriculum <laughs> you've got to be kidding me it's yeah. it so fucked me up at the time and now yeah. looking back it's hilarious hilarious okay so i we talk about that now when you were growing up mm-hmm 
I talk often about how I think laughter really is the best medicine. I grew up very dysfunctional early on in my life. And the only thing that I really had was my sense of humor. It got me out of trouble. It made really awkward, abusive moments a little bit lighter. And that's sort Mm -hmm. of how I became a comedian. Did it start for you early on that you were like, I can be funny now? Or was it after you had your baby? Oh, no, I I was born like, no, I've been that. I have. I was day one, (laughs) day one, been funny, Uh, which is absolutely true. But I definitely did not see humor as getting me out of trouble. My sense of humor got me in trouble (laughs) on the regular. Like I was the only not lady in the house. Like you have met my sisters and my mother. They are perfect. Perfect ladies. Ladies, wonderful. And cunt is my favorite word. Like I got in trouble (laughs) for my humor constantly. I mean, it did like I did get out of trouble sometimes with my parents because I would just make them laugh and they Uh wouldn't, you know, punish me for whatever. But more often than not, my humor got me in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you um, fast forward. You were funny through high school because I remember that. Mm -hmm. And then you have your baby. Then you had two more beautiful babies Mm -hmm. and you created this life with Sterling. When did the not the worst mom brand kind of start? And when did you really start embracing being a comedian? Because you were a makeup artist first and and Mm -hmm. a beautiful one at that. Yeah, so I, in 2017, this actually, because I'm not very mushy-gushy, like I'm just a bitch all the time. That's not a bitch too, but I'm mushy-gushy, so if you're going mushy, I'll go with you. Yeah, this is, I think this, like, my brand origin story is kind of mushy-gushy, and I absolutely love it. Um, So in 2017, I was working for um, MGM, their corporate office, in the social media department, and loved it, wanted to, I was ready to go back to school to get my degree so that I could, like, that was kind of the only way that you could move up a couple years ago. It was like, well, if you don't have a degree, they won't even look at you. So I was like, okay. And that's really what I wanted to do. I genuinely thought I wanted to like climb the corporate ladder. Um, And in 2017, my mom, who has epilepsy, she had two seizures behind the wheel, ended up crashing her car, rolled it, absolute miracle that she's alive. We didn't even know she was in the accident until she came to the next day. I mean, because it had been what, like, not even 24 hours since I talked to her that was not you know uh out of the norm Mm -hmm. and so she like woke up in the hospital came to you know called me and was like I don't know where I am I'm in the hospital like you need to come here absolutely terrible thankfully she was alive um I ended up taking FMLA off of work so that I could take care of her because she literally needed time to recover she couldn't even be alone and in that month I was like had this light you know life realization that I was like, life is too short. This is fucking crazy. Like she could have been gone. Like, do I really want to spend the next couple years? Like, I think my oldest was in seventh grade at the time. I was like, I only have six more years with him and that's it. I was like, do I want to spend the majority of that time in school and then working late in terrible lighting in a shitty tacky looking office? Fucking bad lighting. (laughs) Terrible lighting. I was like, "Mm, no, no, I do not. So when I went back to after the month off, I was like, fuck this shit. I put my two weeks in and I was like, I'm not going to do it. Brianna at the time had Buzzbrand, which is her marketing agency that she had started with just her laptop. And so she finally got to the point in her business where she was like, I can't take on any more clients unless I expand my team. So Megan, my older sister and I both left our jobs to work for her. And her first like team task for us was to read Gary V's new book that I... I love Gary V. I almost wore his shirt to this. Honestly, and I wish you would have because I love Gary V. Changed my life, bitch. He He changed changed my life. He he literally changed my life. Okay, I didn't want to get all live, love, laugh with you because we aren't those bitches. We're living, laughing, laughing. We're living, living, laughing. It's going to happen. And Gary V, if you're watching, normally I like to die hate and cry but no live, we're laugh, loving is who we are yes glad we could share that too thank you just for bringing that up there's God, there's gonna be more stuff we have in yeah common. there are I we're gonna cry stuff. i can feel it so i'm a cunt and i didn't read the book but i read the back <laughs> and <laughs> after <laughs> all that you didn't even read the fucking book <laughs> okay. brianna was like this is i'm your boss this is your <laughs> first and only homework assignment and i was like listen i'll get to it here's what i took from the back cover um and (laughs) it was uh, something along the lines of like I can't even remember exactly what it was that's how impactful it was on my life obviously but um it was talking about merging something that you are naturally good at 
and finding a way to make money off of it. And I had gotten to that point in like my career where I knew enough about branding, about marketing that I was like, I want to start my own brand. It's like, I don't know what it is. I'm going to figure it out, but I really want to start and build my own brand because I think that I can do it. And then through like brainstorming, I put it together because I, in my head, I was like, I had only had like one real job and didn't have a degree and didn't have really like a career. Like I wasn't like getting promoted up the whatever at somebody else's company. And so I was kind of like down on it a little bit, but I was like, you know what? It's like the only thing I'm really good at is like being funny and I'm a mom and I know how to market. And thus birthed not the worst mom. Not the worst mom. Yeah. And because not the worst mom. Of the mom. back of Gary V's book. Because of the back of didn't Gary V. Didn't need to read it. I, that's how talented did you are. You don't even need to read books. I'm just so intuitive. You know I what? Was you like, don't need this Borman. is a banger. You don't need Gary V's books. No. You just need you. Yeah, that's all I need. That's all. Okay, so not the worst mom starts in mm -hmm. 2017, and I remember it like it was yesterday because I. I saw your audience explode and they really did. It was yeah. like everyone really needed you. I feel like I remember you before I, we ever met Heather McMahon. Like I felt like. I, re I watched Heather McMahon explode. I did too, but I watched I was an you early first. Adopter. I was an early adopter of Heather McMahon. Okay. If Heather's seeing this. Heather, she does follow me. That's, Heather is. She's the best. She's coming to Vegas and we should go see her. Yeah, I'll give you all the details when this is over. We are going to see her. I'll give you everything. Her. You should be opening up for her, but we'll talk about <gasps> that after. I know, I'm putting it out there for you, she should. Um, okay, so 2017, we watch your brand explode. And we're going to have some fun. I want to play this game with you. But when I was looking through your social media yesterday, there was a topic that you discussed that happened in 2019 that I think is what really... You were so funny and so relatable, but then we got to see this other side of you that was a really um, vulnerable mom emotional side. Mm -hmm. And it's in your stories if they want to, but if you're comfortable talking about it, what happened in 2019 when you were at dinner, I think it was your dad's birthday. And Oh, okay. So yeah, it, <clears throat> excuse me. Didn't, it didn't happen in 2019. It happened in 2005. Oh, okay, but you talked about I it. I talked about it in 2019, okay. I think, for the first time, like, at length. Um, I So I had my son in November of 2004, and then in Feb February, I think that's about when I would have gotten pregnant, must have been in February, I got pregnant again, and I didn't realize it, which was the biggest blessing that could have ever happened to me, because I'm one of those, like, down to the second type of girls. My, I'm as regular as the tides. Like I don't get my period by 10 a.m. I knew I was pregnant. What does that feel like? Was it? I because mine is like this. Oh, I don't. I can tell you when an egg drops and on which side the second it does. Give me some of that womb energy it's, right now. I'm give it to me. If I didn't have an IUD and Sterling didn't have a vasectomy, I, I would have 26 children. kids. <laughs> I would have had one every year. Come on, from Fertile here. Myrtle. I know. He looked at me and I was like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> That's what happened, dad. I never. <laughs> no, we're talking to the blessed mother here. Okay. Yeah. She went to Gorman. She never immaculate. had sex. Immaculate. Catholic. Okay. okay. And that's on Catholic Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary V. Yes. <laughs> and, it was, yeah. Because Gary V. I actually immaculate. Conception. The only kneeling she ever did was when she had to do the, what is it? When we have to kneel down, the flash, not flatulation. What, the, the, um. Uh, genuflect. Genuflect. Flatulation. Why would I say that? Yeah, we're just farting know. in church. Okay. I mean, we probably, there, there's a crossover there. There is. I'm Thank sure you. it happens a Thank lot. Thank you for normalizing that for no. me. And so, um, for literally first time in my life, I didn't even notice that I had missed a period or what, whatever it was. And it was my dad's birthday and we were going over to his house and I finally got my period and I was like, it was kicking my ass. I was like, fuck, this is just not the business. I was like, what is this? And then was just really not feeling good, but I have terrible menstrual cramps. So whatever, go to the bathroom, my dad's house at his family birthday party, go to change my tampon and a graphic warning, trigger warning, if this is for anybody, because it is a lot, there's like literally a clump of tissue comes out. And I was like, like it didn't even, it didn't even register. And because I didn't even think I was pregnant. Like that was just, it was just not even an option. And I literally remember like grabbing it and looking at it. And I was just like, what the, f 
fuck? Like, what is this? And so, you know, changed my tampon, flushed the toilet, like washed my hands, went along my way and was so tired, fell asleep on the couch. And then finally when I got home, I told, you know, had told my husband and still just, it was just not clicking. Well, and in 2005, we didn't have like smartphones. There was no like Googling no. what's happening. It's either you talk to somebody or you just stay right. in the dark. Right. And I literally Googled it when we got home, like on our home, you know, desktop computer that yeah. could barely fit in this room. It was so huge. <laughs> and looked up what a miscarriage was or whatever and just exploded with emotion. I was absolutely beside myself because I was like, wait a fuck. I literally flushed my baby down the toilet. Yeah. And that fucked with me so bad for so many years. I couldn't even talk to Sterling about our miscarriage for probably four or five years wow. like that's how long like and that, that was because of the guilt that you felt or it was just difficult I think it was like about. a self-preservation I was 18 oh like I was still 18 years old like that my son is 18 right now and he's an idiot like is he it can't weird do you not think anything about? yeah is it oh weird all the time think? all the time all the time yeah and so it was just something I could not process like I don't think I was even emotionally developed enough to cope like I just coped with being a mom couldn't cope with losing a baby but it was one of the absolute worst things that I have ever been through and then I remember a friend of ours lost a baby maybe six or seven years later and my husband was like maybe you could like reach out and give her I was like no I was like yeah. I, no I can't I, you know I think it's so sad I have so many girlfriends who have had miscarriages or only have recently started talking about mm -hmm. having a miscarriage, stillborns. And I know that when you did finally talk about it just a few years ago, what was the response like from other women? Because you really kind of talked about something that was very taboo almost. Right. The amount of other women that have flushed their miscarriage, all cry right now. It, unbelievable how common it is. And it was something I crucified myself over because I'm a Catholic, uh, or was, uh, for, I mean, years and years and years because I could, I could not reconcile with that. And then hearing about how all of these other women have also done it because, like, what else are you going to do? I mean, <clears throat> sure, you could have done other things, but in all reality, what are you going to do? It's, you know what I mean? It just is what it is. And the amount of other women that had that same guilt... I had to stop reading messages because I was like crying on my, well, on my phone. I was like, I can't read about one more dead baby. Like I'm going to lose it. Yeah. But it was so healing. Like I didn't realize that I still had healing to do from that experience because I was finally able to talk about it, you know, so openly. Um, and that was not a reaction that I was expecting of how many women were like, I've never told anybody that that's what I did. Cause I didn't know what else to do. And as somebody who I, I, I just see it like I, I haven't experienced it. I also live like an alternative life. I seeing you and like as your friend and seeing these other women, it makes me cry because I'm like, I would never look at Cheer you like up that. again like this and I'll cry. I, I know. Listen, I will cry because I love women. <laughs> I say cry. Oh, I, I love you women. You know, because I, it's just because I love women. I love my sister and love my niece and yeah. I would never in my mind I would never look at you and say like you did something not okay you're right and then right. to see these women I'm like I, you did everything you could so I just I just wanted you to kind of talk about that because I I, I didn't realize how helpful it was to not yeah. only your following but to so many women um because it yeah I guess you don't think about it until you say it and then you're like oh right Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's like one of those things that you like, there was just so much shame that I would never say it out loud. And then once you do, and you kind of look back, like I would never look at another woman who did that and be like, wow, that super fucked up. But I feel like you that's how women are. I, we, yes. I, so many things I would never look at other women and be like, what are you thinking? And then to me, I'm like, I hate myself. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. I'm like, it's okay for everybody but me. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. that's the world I live in. It's my everyday reality. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about Sterling because now you guys, he was obviously very supportive mm -hmm. through all of that. I love your husband. I love the two of you together. I love your podcast, Not the Worst Marriage. I feel like you, I feel like that's sort of your brand, really normalizing so many things that people don't talk about. Yeah. And I remember uh, there was something that you talked about 
years ago um, that just I kept with me for my own personal relationships. But it's been how many years? 20 years now that you guys have been together? I think we're coming up on 22 years. 22 years. Hold on. Noah's 18, maybe 21 years. We're down there. It's okay. over 20. We're going over 20 years. Yeah. You met in high school. You got pregnant. Now, as according to like statistics, the odds were against you. Right. Yet to me, you're one of my favorite marriages, not only on social media, but in real life, because I know you in real life. Yeah. What is the secret to such a successful marriage? Um... One, I don't think there's a secret because we do get asked that all the time. Not all the time, but we've been asked that. I so don't... you've been asked this before. So this question was not original and that... exclusive to So Funny It Hurts. I, <laughs> I, it sounds cliche, but like there's, I don't, there's no meant to be. Like there is no soulmate. There is no, oh, my person. Is he my person? Absolutely. 100%. But we've almost divorced three times. Like there is no, it just worked out. I challenge you find any couple who has been together for over 20 years. I guarantee you they have almost divorced at least twice. Yeah. Like the, you just get through that. If you can get through that, then you can stay together, but you also have to be willing to change yourself like that. Well, oh, well, nobody, you know, don't change the people you love. Fuck that. You were an absolute piece of shit. You're telling me that you as you are, as you came into this world with everything that's ever happened to you, that you were just somebody else's perfect match with absolutely no flaws. You're fucking out of your mind. That will never be it. No. Yeah. And so because we got young or we got, you know, together when we were so young, we still had a lot of growing to do. We had a lot of mistakes still to make. We had a lot of forgiving each other still to do. And so what most people do, you know, in and out of the course of a several relationships or whatnot, we did all together and made it through because we were like, this is what we wanted. Like, that's what we wanted. We wanted each other regardless of all the bullshit. And we had a lot. But we worked really, really hard on ourselves to make it work. There was no like, you know, I wasn't working on him and he wasn't like there's it's the trope. And I still think it's funny, but come down to it. We're being serious, like training your man or, you know, teaching him this or whatever that like. No, you need to teach yourself how to not be an absolute piece of shit because you're a miserable person. Yeah. Everybody in here. And that's not to say that everyone isn't like valid or worthy of love or it's not taking away from your self-worth. It's just being aware of your own faults and how they affect the person that you're trying to build a life with. Like one of our favorite pieces of advice was, <clears throat> and I've seen people try to spin this negatively and go ahead you can spin it negative anything. If you I will want never to. do that here. We'll it's, keep it in the Gary V positive light right. forever. And it's the, it's what's the advice? Remember you're difficult to live with. So make it as easy on the other person as possible. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And some people would be like, no, and that's not me. And I'm like, okay, well, welcome to not hearing the point whatsoever. But um, we've really, really tried to live by that and be self-aware. And that's how we are still together. Yeah. But your transparency is so helpful. I will say I was a train wreck when I met Lisa and then continued to be very toxic for the next five years. It'll be eight years this uh, month. Oh but God, I feel like years. it's been eight years where is time? I know I know oh. that damn lesbian I love her so much but I have always found that when people share their transparency it helps me feel less um embarrassed or bad or like I don't know how to fix it or I don't know what to do and so I love that advice uh from you okay now we're gonna have a little fun okay I <clears throat> talk to your man Sterling, if you're watching, I appreciate you. Love you, bitch. This bitch <laughs> talked to my husband. And do you know how he answered find me? out things. When I said, will you give me this? He said, bitch. Shut up. Yes. Did you really? And I was like, I know that's right, king. <laughs> you understood the assignment. Okay, so this you have to answer. The game is called Apologize, Lies, Denies. So Love you it. can do... One of the three, but there is no pleading the fifth. Now, oh, God. Okay. Chase, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Hold on. Apologize, lies, or deny. Yes. Okay. You almost stabbed your husband when as a teen, you were doing dishes and he scared the living shit out of you. Apologize, lies, denies. What does apologize mean? Like apologize for You're doing that? You're sorry for almost stabbing him. I am not sorry for almost <laughs> stabbing him. 
Did I almost stab him? 100%. It would have been absolutely justified. <laughs> and and that's on <laughs> shanking your husband, period. Yes. No, that's where he get my, the house that I grew up in. Listen, he, I, probable cause, whatever the legal <laughs> thing is. I, no fault state. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> We're taking no responsibility here. You got it? I'll take responsibility. Just not for this. <laughs> Um, I was doing the dishes and in my house, uh, we had like really big windows that like went into the backyard <laughs> and it, because of these really big windows, mind you, scream came out when we were, I was in like fifth oh, grade shit. and that trauma, uh-huh. instant trauma and we had a pool out there, instant trauma. <laughs> so I was already terrified of these dark windows unless like the lights were on in the backyard, you couldn't see anything. Right. So I knew he was on his way over. I was like doing dishes and instead of like going to the front door, like a normal fucking person, <laughs> he hops in the backyard <laughs> And sneaks up to the windows and just like bangs on them really hard. I almost had a heart attack. Yeah. And he thought it was hilarious. Yeah. He doesn't No, He deserved it. Oh, thank you. As we're saying it out loud. And now thank you've made you. scream references. You see? He deserved it. <laughs> Ghost face changes the whole uh, it pers- does. The whole now perspective. I'm like, Fuck you, Sterling. Yeah. You mm-hmm. should have gotten stabbed. Yeah. Okay. You know what? You don't have to, do you want to, do you have any, do you want to apologize lies to nice? No, you believe it all. You're happy you did it. I'm sorry I didn't stab him. She apologizes for not stabbing him. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Second question. Okay. You believe you can speak to animals and maybe lovingly <laughs> referred to as Snow White. Talk to me. Oh, hold on. Apologize <laughs> lies or denies? Yeah. I, I apologize for not being able to teach other people how to talk to animals. <laughs> like I, <laughs> how are you talking to animals? What kind of animals? They, all of them. Oh, they oh. understand me. Okay. And I think I have <laughs> ample proof. One that I was raised by Ace Ventura. It's my entire personality. Okay. Uh, okay. Everything you're saying is making sense. The movie references make sense to me. Two raised by Ace Ventura, pet detective. It explains a lot. I honestly. Once you look at me through the lens of Ace Ventura, I was a vegan for years. I get it. It really brings it all together. I get it. <laughs> so he, he, he has also seen this and he believes it. I think he won't admit that he believes it. Okay. But like the first time, not the first time, one of several occasions, but we, um, we were camping for, I think it was our 10th anniversary and we were sitting and we were like eating breakfast and still had food out. Um, and we were in bear country and it was like, we didn't quite realize that they meant you can't leave food out for five seconds. Like you can make your sandwich and then put everything away and then go eat no. it on the toilet. I don't know. <laughs> like, because they'll just especially um if bears know that it's a campsite like they just kind of come back around whatever so we're sitting there and i was like i fucking hope a bear comes into our campsite are you kidding the best day of my life we're sitting there and from i mean it was maybe 30 feet away we see up at the top of this little hill a little baby bear like pop its little head up from behind a bush and stare at us and we both like froze and then it like popped its head, its head down and both of us like stood up and like grabbed, like, I think I grabbed like a cast iron pot or whatever, <laughs> because I don't, I guess we had looked it up. I don't know. Apparently immediately we knew what to do when bears are around <laughs> and <laughs> like, we're from Las Vegas. <laughs> we know what to do. And he is like about to shit his pants. And I was all, fuck. Yes. I was like, bear, it's fine. Should we go look for it? He's all, are you? kidding me <laughs> right now i was like a bear would never hurt me asshole first of all I he was like to them. do you know what the mom could have been around and this is before revenant okay there's gonna be movie references and before all cocaine bear so and before cocaine bear and my there was like literally posters around the campsite that was like hey two weeks ago someone went to the hospital because a bear mauled them <laughs> no, I'm not but the kidding. mama bear and you saw the mama bear and her and you were like i'm not gonna get thank hurt. you she would absolutely recognize game recognizes game they, okay i know that's right and she would be like she would never hurt my baby i would never hurt her or her babies and we were cl- listen did we get hurt no no explain that honestly sterling you're losing so bad right he's now. gonna lose every single one of these Lo- <sighs> loser okay so i'm sorry i didn't bring the baby bear home <laughs> <laughs> okay um you recently told your husband that you, in fact, are not a fan of Training Day, which was your first <laughs> date with him. Apologize, lies, or denies? 
Um, lies. I feel like I told him at some point. <laughs> but she no, told you I, sooner than 21 years ago and you know it. I told him this live on one of our podcast episodes, realizing I had never told him, I don't like that movie. And movies are like our thing. Yeah. And he, I mean, we watched that movie together a bunch of times. He's like, oh my God, it's our movie. Like, let's put it on. I'm like, fuck yeah, babe. And I don't really like it. Do you act like you like it? Uh-huh. Do you make, like, ooh, I love this part. I'm like, oh, it's my favorite line. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, I love day. Denzel in it, but right. Ethan Hawke makes me want to punch a baby in that movie. I just can't stand him. Not a baby bear, though. Never. Not a baby, just Would a regular a baby. baby. A regular baby. I hear that. Okay, I get it. Um, you enjoy kayaking, even if you've only been just a few times. Apologize. Lies, denies. I apologize for taking him with me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen to me. I only asked that question because one time Lisa and I went on this big lesbian cruise where we were entertainers uh-huh. and I was feeling very adventurous and I was like, come on, so we're going kayaking. I just got my lips filled. I was feeling like I can do oh, anything. Top of the world. I had my big ass fake implants. I was like, if we go over every, I will put pr- the lips, save the tits village. will save us. Yes. Yeah. So we get in this stupid thing, and I'm very competitive, and I wanted to be... No. No. Not me. Not me. I never think about Carrie Underwood. Um, I (laughs) fucking see these other lesbians, and they're like North Face Convention lesbians. (gasps) They are ready. They've been kayaking their whole lives. I said, Lisa, get in the back. Mm -hmm. I fucking... I gunned that bitch, so... And we did make it for... Did you win? I didn't know... We had to go back. Oh. And so on our way back, was rough. we started to crumble. <laughs> My spray tan was f- take coming off. I think I undid a weave at one point. <gasps> I, was, I was so upset. My arms were tired. It's rough. I was like, go, lesbians, go. It was oh, awful. My, and they were like, why are they racing all the way down there? They're like, they this is around. supposed to be beautiful. And I was like, what's beautiful is when I win. I will drown you and your family <laughs> I will drown in order to win this. <laughs> Okay, you so and you your ever, REI yeah, rehydrated oh, you're so good food. with your beautiful triceps. Get the fuck out of yeah, here, bye. lesbian. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, if you ever want to go kayaking. Yes. Let's go. The answer is yes, I have two. Yes, he bought me He bought me kayaks for Mother's Day last year. <sighs> See you in Lake Mead. See you at Lake Mead. Yes, 100%. That's all I'm going to say. See you at Lake mm-hmm, Mead. Mm-hmm. Okay, final question. <clears throat> you broke into your neighbor's house after calling the police because your daughter who was in fact sleeping over, did not answer the first time you called. Apologize, lies, or denies? I denied because she didn't answer (laughs) the 20 times that I called. (laughs) Okay, please just tell our audience how you ended up at your neighbor's house last weekend with firefighters, 911, Uh and your husband. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, oh. God, this is still <laughs> my worst day as a mother, literally to date. I So we don't really do sleepovers because I don't trust anybody. I know that's right. And I'm like, yeah, no. You, we, we will have all the sleepovers 24-7. You guys want to stay for three days, we don't care. But the kids have not done many sleepovers. Madeline has done probably less than 10, uh, has had two in the last month her last two ever. (laughs) And um, so she asks, and her friend that literally lives just around the corners, like in our neighborhood. Um, And she's like, Hey, can I spend the night um, at her house? I go, okay, fine. And then she had, and this is the most important part of the story that I feel like no one takes seriously. (laughs) She had a hair appointment Saturday at 1 PM. This is not something that girls miss. No, this is not an oversight. This is not a forgot Hair appointments, mm-hmm. when you're changed, like she's going from pink hair to ice blonde hair. This is a big deal. You're not missing that appointment. You're not missing the appointment. No. No. So first thing Saturday morning, she texts me, hey, can you pick me up at noon so that we can, I can come home and shower before the appointment. I'm like, sure. Then I, you know, text her, hey, I'm on my way. And then when I get there, I'm like, hey, I'm here. And she doesn't answer. And so I text her again. She doesn't answer. And so I call her. I'm like, she's probably just grabbing her shit, like saying goodbye, whatever. Um, and she doesn't answer the phone. So finally, I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'm, you're going to walk home if you don't hurry the fuck up. Like, come on. So I go up to the door uh, and I knock on the door and, you know, trying not, you know, maybe they're sleeping in, like being really polite. I look like a homeless woman. <laughs> I am in sandals, pajamas. God bless America. I had a bra on. Okay. That's a huge win. That's a That's big win. That's a huge win. win across the door. Okay. And um, 
hair up and I'm just a mess. So knock on the door, no response, you know, go to try to ring the doorbell. I don't think the doorbell is working. I can't hear it. So I'm like, oh, okay. And they don't have like a ring doorbell that I can see. Um, so I knock, then I like knock again and I can hear someone talking and they're like, hello. And I'm like, hi, like, hey, you know, Madeline's mom I'm here to pick up Madeline. Mind you still calling and texting her. She's not picking up the phone. And I'm like, keep it cool. It's cool. It's cool. We're chill. But you do, in fact, hear somebody behind the door because this is a very important part of the story. Yes, I hear Chase, him. our producer, this is a very important part of the story. I'm listening intently. Okay. Literally, hi, hello, hi, hello, and no response. And I'm like, that's cool. Okay. I'm like, maybe it's the little, I don't know. I don't know. Running all over the place with, you know, conclusions and trying not to be a goddamn lunatic. <laughs> um, and so I check my daughter's location. I'm like, did this bitch leave? No, she's at the house. Her phone is inside the house. Pinging live. I know she's there. And so I'm like knocking on the window, like trying not to freak out. Then the neighbor walks out and he's like, I can tell he's like looking at me sketch, understandably. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, have you like seen them? Because I don't know the parents' names. Can't remember them. Which, way to go. Best mother in yeah. the world. Okay. <laughs> don't have the other daughter's phone number, which I have all of her friends' numbers and their parents. This is just this, one that just slipped under the radar. It, apparently. And so he is like, do you know their names? Do you even know who lives here? And I'm like, ooh, okay, I like you, fair. And I'm like, I can't remember their name. I'm like, their daughter's name is blank. I was like, she's my daughter's best friend. And I was like, my daughter's in the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because now we're going on like 10, 15 minutes of her not answering the phone, yeah. which is a long time when you have kids. And you know there's somebody behind that door. Someone is in the house. Yep. Which at this point, I'm like, my daughter's captor is in there with her. Because <laughs> who else could it be? Obviously. And so he is like, no, sorry, you know, well, their cars aren't here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, you're gonna help. Bye. So I call my husband because I'm trying, like, I need backup because I'm trying not to freak out because that's, I, he's the person who's like, it's gonna be okay, fine. And I'm like, no, we should call a SWAT team. So <laughs> I, you know, she's not answering. I tell him, I'm like, I'm coming to get you because she's not answering the phone, but I know her phone's in there. Tell them the story, blah, blah, blah. Go, I'm driving. 200 miles an hour back to my house yeah. to pick him up. He comes over. I'm pounding on the door. My knuckles are, no, they just stopped being bruised from how hard I was knocking on yeah. the door. Yeah. And so he is going around asking the neighbors, like, you know, like a normal person, like, Hey, do you have, you know, have you heard from them or well, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm still freaking out. And so I'm like, I'm calling 911. I don't know. I literally don't know what else to do because I'm like, I will break into this house, but I feel like, if I'm going to, I should probably call the police first. Yeah, call 911. <clears throat> yeah, so I call 911, and I pray to God that those 911 operators see this story on their TikTok for you page. <laughs> because I, it did go viral, by the way. Yes. This story went crazy. And I double dog fucking dare them <laughs> to stitch that video. Say it again. Kay. Say it again. I'm talking about the second, yeah, I'll the knock you both the fuck out. So mm -hmm. I get on the phone 911. Trying to stay calm, explain to him the situation. He's like, okay, well, that's not emergency. Transfer me to non-emergency, which, and then I'm on hold, which I didn't know they could do that. Didn't know they could either. I literally did not know that 911 or 311 will put you on hold or that there's ever a wait time. Yeah. But that's a problem in and of itself. Welcome. We it's called welcome people. to America. When you yeah. call 911, you may be placed on hold. Yes. They need a break as well. Oh, so... I, you know, I'm on hold, come to realize the person talking behind the door is their fucking pet parrot. Like the pet bird, like a macaw. The person that you thought was talking back to you for 30 minutes was not the captor, bitch. It was their fucking Hello? Parrot. Hi. Hi. Because I'm like, I, I think, thankfully, I think I that realized that. The parrot is the star of this fucking show. The parrot is the most unnecessary <laughs> addition to all of the main players. Truly what nobody asked for no, was this no one. fucking macaw. Who can talk? <laughs> and like, you, I mean, everybody has heard a parrot. They sound like people, especially behind the door. <laughs> Like, thankfully, the bird only was saying, like, hi, hello, hi, hello, which eventually, like, I was all, okay. That, and then I could hear it because my grandmother had a bird, and they're all from the devil. They're all of them, straight from hell. I love animals. 
Not birds Except anymore. Macaws. No, I will break all their necks. <laughs> so, like, I call <laughs> the level. I'm like, to I'm the bird sweating. community, we do not want to get canceled, but the macaws are fucking out. Cancel me. Fuck all y'all <laughs> and your bird. I do not give a shit. No, I do not care. PETA, call me up. We can meet outside. <laughs> Swear to God. Okay. So I um, realized that it is, in fact, not a person. Thank God. And um, because that would have made the situation so much worse. Yeah. Like, why is there somebody in the house not answering? The right. Um, and so being on hold from 911, I, or 311, I hang up. I call 911 back. Tell them I'm on hold. I'm like, no, it's not acceptable. <laughs> and now I'm getting like more and more frantic. Mind you, we have looked for like their house key under everything on their porch. Because we're getting into that. I'm like, I'm getting into the house. Yeah, your kids are there. Yes. I can see that she is here. Um, so he, the guy is super nice, and, but he, and he's like, please stay calm. He's like, someone will answer. I'm going to transfer you again, blah, blah, blah. So he transfers me again, and then I'm on hold for 15 minutes. How are they putting you on hold? I'm not understanding. I'm not either. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm telling you that I have probable cause to think my minor daughter is missing. And you're like, and when she says probable cause, I just want to remind our audience, she spoke to her daughter an hour prior who asked her to come pick her up. But because women are serious about hair appointments, she assumed she had been in that hour kidnapped. Sex trafficked. And sex trafficked. Where so else? Think about that. Okay. Okay. Only options at this and point. And I know that's Those are right. the only things that would keep her from this hair appointment. Right. <laughs> Uh, so in the, you know, while we're on hold, we are, my husband is yelling up into like the windows, calling her name. Maybe they're, they can't hear us or in the back of the house. He takes the hose is spraying the second story windows to like ma- signal someone. I don't right, know. I right. don't know. Very, honestly, valid plan. Be- <laughs> Very clever. It, he was, 911 was not matching the energy. Dad was matching the energy. Dad was giving what needed to be given. He, while I'm on the phone with 911, he's texting our cop friend who is at the precinct that is right next to, um, like our houses is in our neighborhood, asking him like, what, oh my God, what do we do? Like, we don't know what to do. And yeah. anyways, so after 15 minutes, I am absolutely done fucking around because it has, n- it's now been like 45 minutes that I was supposed to pick her up. Yeah. And call 911 back. Now it's a woman, and if I ever find this woman in real life, it's on. Okay. On site. Okay. Woman, we will find you. I hope you hear this, bitch. Okay. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have kids. How do I know? Because I do. And <laughs> this woman does not have children. Of she her doesn't own. get it. No. She did not get it. And I'm assuming she had talked to the guy that I was, like, low-key freaking out on beforehand because she's all, ma'am, like, giving me <gasps> attitude. Okay. Your daughter could be getting sex trafficked and she's going to call you ma'am. She could have been in Mexico at this point. 45 minutes. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And she straight up tells me, she's like, this is still considered a non emergency. She goes, I left this part of the story. This bitch on the phone tells me we actually have bigger emergencies right now. (gasps) Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Everyone's daughter is missing. You guys are doing nothing. (laughs) Okay. So (laughs) I'm so, (laughs) I'm so mad. (laughs) And so she transfers me like while I'm mid telling her and mind you, I've told them now because they they had asked me, they're like, are you in fear for her safety? And at first I was like, um, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, should I be in fear for her safety? Yeah. You you, you do this for a living. Yes. And so I'm trying to tell her like, I'm in fear for her safety. She cuts me off. She transfers me. As soon as she transfers me, I'm all, fuck this. I hang up the phone. I alley oop into the backyard with <laughs> the, the uh, like a, a gazelle. I don't all oh. of the grace mm. of anything you could ever Beautiful. imagine. Beautiful. Um, and I get over that wall and my husband is like, Oh my God. Okay. We're <laughs> going, I'm, you don't have to come with me. I'm going into the house <laughs> yes. because I had started to rip the screen off of the front door of, off of the front window. And he was like, don't break their shit. And I'm like, okay, fine. Great. So anyways, after I'll just m- break, the fuck in. Yeah. And Good. um I uh, they have dogs in the backyard, mind you. This is the other part I forgot to leave out of the story. I have like a full bugger that I just need to grab. Fine, get Thank it. you. Fine. Okay, we're I back. have a nose ring. I'm Thank you. well aware. Go on. It happens. <laughs> um so the two dogs in the backyard who were silent, mind you, two little pit bulls, most well behaved pit bulls, not great guard dogs, but they come to find out those two dogs were a mom and daughter. So she You're was telling like, me that bitch did not break. Exactly. Enter my home and get your yeah. daughter. Yep. 
had Sterling been okay, the first one Snow over? Okay, Snow White is making more and more sense Thank now you. as this podcast is going on. Thank you. I blame right, so you the bird for not explaining. In that house. Yeah, fuck <laughs> the that bird should have told me because yeah. obviously I can understand. Yeah. Um, I walked into the back door. Yes, you did. And we find this bitch asleep with her friends upstairs after clearing the whole house like the SWAT team. <laughs> And I'm like, and there she is again, like, oh, thankfully the parent, you know, the dad doesn't work graveyard and was just sleeping like a normal human being and met us with a shotgun. Like, so, you know what I mean? That didn't happen. Yeah, but oh yeah. Thank so God. So many things could have yeah. gone wrong. But honestly, oh. I feel like this is why your brand is not the worst mom, kind of the best fucking mom. You got your kid. Yeah. She was alive. Scared the shit out of her. Yes, you did. When I walked into that bedroom. Yes, you did. Screamed at these girls with the force of a thousand mothers. Yeah, you did. Um, And then the absolute worst part of this story is that her mom saw the video um, because she has been following me for over a year and did not know that I was my daughter's Stop mom. it! Stop it! So the mom's... Mom found out because she follows you and was like, oh, shit, that's well, the my daughter, house. Well, the daughter had told her right. what had happened. And then you told the story on TikTok. And then the mom saw the story because Did she, call she you? has, I, she DM'd me and was all, hey, I'm so-and-so's mom. Did you? Did she say anything else? Was she mad? Was she okay? Oh, she was so cool. She was so okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. She was like, for the record, I'm so sorry we put you through this. Also, I would have done the exact same thing. Thank you for not breaking oh my, my windows. Oh, my God! So it ended okay. It ended fine, but I wanted to fake my own death and move out of the country. <laughs> You're like, you know what? Sex traffic me. Take me away. Mortified. Mortified. <laughs> Not embarrassed, but I mean, there, I mean, come on. Come on. It's a lot. Yeah. So, but everyone in my family learned that day. <laughs> If you that I am not fucking phone around, call, I will fucking call nine one one. Yeah, and I have told these kids, I'm like, you don't understand. I can't help it if you don't pick your phone up. I think you're dead. Like I'm joking, but I'm not. Yeah, like that is the only pl- like. Sorry, we live in a technology era where I should be able to see and find you in a fraction of a second, especially because I pay our very expensive fucking phone bill. I know that's I'll right. Take your phone away. Pick it up when I call you. Yeah, you have a very little grace period. My, uh, my sons were like, well, like never you broke into the house. And I was like, you're goddamn right. I did. Listen to me. I have to be honest. I was not surprised. I feel like this is so, you are such a bad bitch and such a bad bitch mom. I love you. I love everything that you do. And I will, I do want to say, I'm going to ask you one more question, but I do want to tell you, I've said this to you before in a DM, but if you don't know what a profound effect you have, I'm not surprised that mother follows you, follows you. I know so many of my girlfriends that do. I feel like for women like myself that don't have great relationships with their moms, Mm -hmm. I think we find a lot of solitude in your parenting and the way that you treat your kids. I mean it. And I know we're not mushy girls, but we are mushy girls. But we are. And I feel like you really do parent so many people that you don't realize you are. And Which is crazy because I got knocked up in high school. (laughs) But that's, you know, it's crazy because I feel like it made you the type of mom that you are. You know, when you see shows like Teen Mom, is that the right depiction? Or are you like, that's disgusting? I've never watched a single episode. Um, I do. I have talked to Chelsea uh, Hauska, Huska. I don't know how to say her last name. Oh, the one. Yeah, right. Um, I have talked to her on social media uh, a couple times over the years, um, but I've never seen an episode because that came out when I was pregnant. Uh, And I was just like, what the fuck is this? I have wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. Yeah. And I... I've been like I I would love to do a deeper dive in this at some point and like kind of break down like what that set every single person's like perception of Teen Moms up for and I think it's still it's still there yeah because of course it's a reality TV show and it's you know supposed to be entertainment it's supposed to be trash television like I totally get that but also like fuck off I hated that show yeah I've never seen it I hate it <laughs> okay there are still <clears throat> babies every day or women that were Teen Moms. That could use a particular sense, I'm sure, of sort of comforting. If you could go back and tell your 18-year-old self anything during probably a really, I don't want to say terrifying because I don't want to speak for you, but just a Mm -hmm. time that was about to totally change your life, Uh what would you tell her with everything you know today? Um, 
probably something along the lines of like the way that you are is fine. Like stop trying to be someone that you're not because all these other moms that I saw were like great moms and like the best moms ever. They were like so polished and put together and like ladies and like quiet and like gentle and demure and like had good manners. And I was just not that. And I thought I had to be that in order to be these other things. And it took me so long to realize that one, that's not true and that's crazy. Um, and that two, that will literally never happen. Like that will not happen. Like nobody can do that and you're not supposed to. Like the way that you are is fine. The things like the things that define you as a person is fine and that you shouldn't be ashamed of that. And then when I finally got to the point where I wasn't, that's when I started Not the Worst Mom and it like went well. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine just embracing yourself as a human and who you are and it being fine. <laughs> um, you went on to do Not the Worst Cookbook that is available yes. now. It actually sold out the minute you hit TikTok. Yeah. Um, and you had to put out some new orders. I have it behind me. Yes. Thank you. Um, not the Worst Cookbook, 30-ish delicious recipes your family doesn't deserve. Uh -huh. It was, uh, you are a number one best-selling author. Where can they get the book if they want to order it? On my website, notthewurstmoms.com. Please look at this. And whoever face. owns not the worst mom dot com. Who Fuck owns you. it? I don't fucking know, but Chase, I'm Chase, who owns it? <laughs> Chase I'll look it up. For us. I'm Googling it. They're private. Chase, Good Google luck. it. We got to know. Um, I love you. I love your husband. I love the type of mother you are. I'm Lisa and I are stepping into motherhood next year. God oh, willing. Amazing. And I hope that you will be with me along the way because yes. I hate uh, the mom shaming that I see happening. Uh, and yeah. I think you're the best representation of just being a mom, a woman, a comedian. Please do stand up soon here in Vegas so I can come and see you. I will. I promise. And I love you. Thank you for coming on my Thank show. You. Thank you so much. This was just as much fun as I thought it was going to be. Thank you, Queen. Love, I it, love, love it, love it, love it. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening to our episode of So Funny It Hurts. Bye. Bye.